In this video lesson, we're going to take a look at the macroeconomic model from short run to long run. We have our downward sloping aggregate demand curve, our upward sloping short run aggregate supply curve, and our vertical long run aggregate supply curve. The intersection between all three of these curves is represented by point A, and this represents long run equilibrium at what we call full employment, represented by equilibrium price level and equilibrium GDP. Let's say if the government goes through expansionary fiscal or monetary policy, which would be considered a short run economic fluctuation, our aggregate demand curve is going to move from long run equilibrium and it's going to shift to the right, creating an entirely new curve. And what's going to happen here is our price level in GDP is going to increase. We find the new intersection with our new aggregate demand curve and the short run aggregate supply curve. Our GDP is going to increase, and so will the price levels. Both are going to increase to price level 1 and Y1, real GDP 1. And we are going to label this letter B representing an increase in aggregate demand moving from A to B. And this is a short run economic fluctuation. So we went from point A to point B for a short run economic fluctuation through expansionary policies. But eventually, as price levels go up, workers are going to gradually be demanding higher wages. And as wages catch up to the new price levels, firms are actually going to be decreasing their supply. The supply is going to be shifting to the left, and price levels are going to continue to rise with higher wages becoming additional cost to firms, and in return, our GDP is going to return to the long-run equilibrium, back to full employment. So we went from A to B to C. So in the long run, our price levels increased, but we did not have any permanent changes in real GDP. In this example, we're going to start off once again in long run equilibrium, which is represented by point A, but this time we're going to go through contractionary fiscal or monetary policy, which is going to shift the aggregate demand curve to the left, moving from AD to AD1. It's going to drive both price level and real GDP down. So we're moving to price level 1. It's going to go down and then new GDP 1. We're also going to be moving from point A to point B. This is once again a short run economic fluctuation. In this example, we went through contractionary policies moving from long run equilibrium point A to point B, lowering both price level and real GDP. Well, in the long run, the supply is going to be shifting to the right, 
creating short run aggregate supply curve. One, creating, once again, we're moving back to long run equilibrium and price levels are going to continue to lower. Basically what's happening in society is that society is adjusting to these new prices. And by adjusting to these new prices, that means that wages are also adjusting. And as wages are adjusting, so will output, so will employment, and so will GDP. So price levels will continue to drop from A to B to C. And in the long run, we are back to our equilibrium output GDP, but price levels are much lower than what they were at the equilibrium point. In this example, we're showing a leftward shift in the short run aggregate supply curve which is going to increase price level and decrease overall output in GDP. And let's say the result of this leftward shift is because of higher production costs, which is going to decrease the short run aggregate supply curve, at least for the short term. If no monetary or fiscal policy is undertaken, uh, the short run aggregate supply curve will return to full employment will return to long run equilibrium. So we would actually be moving this curve back to where we started. It's gonna be moving to the right. Price levels are gonna return. back to equilibrium, and so will our output, our GDP. Why? The level of unemployment at Y1 has driven the nominal wage down, which will eventually lower the price levels and bring our real GDP back to long run equilibrium. Once again, in this example, we're going to take a look at a decrease in the short run aggregate supply curve. Once again, let's say higher production costs decrease the short run aggregate supply curve, at least in the short term. Like let's say if OPEC cuts oil production and the world price of oil rises. Now, if these higher production costs, if they are permanent and they are here to stay, the short run aggregate supply curve will not shift back to equilibrium like we saw in the previous example. If these changes are permanent, these resources are permanently changed forever, the long run aggregate supply curve is going to shift to the left. Moving an entirely new curve, creating this LRAS1. And this price level and this output, this GDP are here to stay.